Who Were the Procrastinators Episode 2? The beginning of Endless Jess, Gibbon, and Trixie by CJ Makes Videos. I did watch CJ's first video on this, Who Were the Procrastinators Episode 1, but I did not watch Episode 2 yet. Here we go. Disclaimer. This documentary discusses the procrastinators. Some former and current members of this podcast have come out as transgender in recent years. I may refer to these members as their former names while using gender neutral they them pronouns as I feel it would be confusing to discuss content they have made in the past without the, without the context of how they publicly identified at the time of creating that content. I actually agree with this because, just a side note, um, I'm gonna just, my, I guess dead name is, is a way of thinking about it, I don't know, not really. But Trixie was Digibro, and my image of Digibro, which is a perfect image, was actually, even though maybe Otaku, not really tough guy, it actually was my image of masculinity, as, as funny as I might say. So obviously once they transitioned, I was like, wait, where'd that image go? Wait a second, it was all a lie? So yeah, uh, I, I agree that because there was a portrayal of masculinity that even I was trying to fit in, so I, I was looking up to it as like an example of maybe who I could be close to or something that, not, not close to, but who I could be similar to. But yes, anyway, I'm glad they put this in here because there is a lot of confusion about like just their attitude in the content. Um, I do not endorse any transphobia or transphobic attitudes towards these creators. My intention is not to offend, but simply to provide context. If any of these creators or others believe I should be handling this differently, I am happy to hear you out. Should you leave a comment down below regarding this or message me a DM on Twitter? Link in the description. So I'm not seeing any, any controversy. Oh, no, no Nate. I don't even know who Nate is. By the way, I actually don't even know who these people are. It's been a little while since I watched the first episode, too. Or the first episode, which is episode one. And I really only followed Trixie or Digibro or whatever they are going by in what point in time. Um, I'd probably say I've watched more Digibro content than anything in, in, in Anime Tube, right? Um, and there was just not obviously the same volume once Trixie came out. So obviously I just have not watched as many Trixie videos. So my image of Digibro is very separate from Trixie. But for this video, it matters with the context. So. Yo, I'm gonna make a rap. That's all I'm, I'm good for anymore. That's all I got left in me, I guess. Another Directbeats.com. Oh God, I fucking hate. Drowning in footwear, also known as drowning in horseshoes, who would also go on later to be known as Endless Jess or just Jess, which is probably how I'm gonna refer to him from this point onwards, was another YouTube content creator who created their YouTube channel in October of 2011. They uploaded their first video in the same month, posting a video titled Demon Souls Review. Okay, Demon Souls is the bomb. Yeah, I'm bringing back the bomb. It's an old school dungeon crawler style hack and slash RPG that reminds you of the good old days, back when games were challenging and not just up their own asses with ridiculous self-indulgent 40 hour cutscenes. The writing in this review is impressive for a first video. He talks about how well the player gets immersed in the world and complains about how modern games are often too overloaded with cutscenes, which he does not think Demon Souls suffers from. Yeah, for, for a first video, that's awesome. I know that obviously, well, I know that Trixie was heavily inspired, especially early on by this Jess person, but as funny as it sounds, I literally don't know anybody in the PCP at all. At all. Like, I've only heard of them and their, like the, the effect that they obviously had on my favorite creator. But, yeah, um, I, I don't really know what to take from this, but from our first video, I will say that, sounds, that, that looked pretty good. You know, I mean, I, I like Dark Souls games anyway, so I'm probably up my alley for this kind of review. Um, and I'm sure that the content is very different now from what this originated from, which is probably what, uh, you know, uh, probably what CJ is going to get into. He adds a lot of humor to his video, and even as someone who personally didn't totally get his humor when listening to the PCP, even I admit, he was really funny. Plus is about- HOLY CRAP! DAMN! Yeah, this game's hard, okay? Hell. It's almost as hard as my muscles. 
broken fist and I'll read the video ends with Jess singing a heavy metal song about why he likes hard games. Love Demon Souls. I love it because it's really hard. Some people say that it's too hard. Those people are pussies. One month later. So I don't really know the concept of, of, of cringe. I know that for me, there is like, there's a lot of a higher bar for something to be actually cringe for me. Watching that, I'm sure most people will say, let's, will say like, oh, that's like a oh look how long that was, it's so cringe. I actually think that was still pretty good. Like I would, especially in the past, I would have been happy if I could make something like that. Like that was that was pretty impressive. I mean, I see the talent in this. Video editing and you know like the diversity of reviewing the game, playing the game, seeing about it. You know what I'm saying I, I, I like that a lot actually. So I don't know. I don't call. I don't think it's cringe, but people might think it's cringe. I actually respect just even that first montage. Jess would post another drowning in footwear review of the game Party Babies, a simulator game about uh, partying babies, I guess. It was filled with mini games, sort of Mario Party style. He continues bringing his sense of humor into this and his subsequent reviews as well. He continues making content similar to this on his main channel alongside a clip from a collaboration with Reckless Eating, discussing his love of Count Chocula. As this channel went on, he would continue making reviews, but would also make videos passionately ranting about things on his mind, or making rap music. Yeah, I feel like this is not like, this is me, literally! I think I actually am more aligned with Trixie's style, but I'm like, yeah, no, uh... I want to like I want to play games so that I can talk over them partially. Like I mean, there is I, I watched you know Trixie's last video, um, self insistence, and I am working on this myself, putting myself into the game. The game is great. I love the game, but when I'm recording the game, I'm trying to put myself into the game. I really am. Um, sometimes it's more of just like a window. Like Isaac is a cluster, f <laughs> a cluster heck for me. Um, I think Fortnite is supposed to be a little more upbeat and stuff, like where I get to react like this kind of stuff. Um, so, yeah, I, I like it. I feel like I would want to do everything that they did. Just the random reviews, the random rants, the, you know, the rapping maybe even. But I, I, I'm trying to find my ways of making it make sense for my content too, you know? Uh, I mean, I'm not saying they didn't. I'm saying that for me. I'm not just anymore. I would have probably in the past just shot off random stuff. Now I'm like, what can I make work? For something like if I'm making a portfolio of some sort, I, I don't really love to like subscribe. You know, I almost said subscribe, subscribe right now. I don't want to subscribe to the idea, as I was trying to say, of like you know selling out or doing the classic YouTube thing. I literally said subscribe and I almost just choked my my face because I never I never asked to like or subscribe to my video. I was like a got a reaction to how often I hate hearing it. People take time away from the video talking about it. Obviously, right here is part of my video, but uh, you know. I don't know. Basically, I I don't know. I love the idea of just shooting out let's plays, shooting out rants, shooting out songs, and like it all just being tied to you automatically somehow, rather than like the algorithm separating you into being something different from everything else to where you can't be found. Like you can't succeed if you're diverting from the one thing you're doing. Obviously, I don't know. It's tough for me. I'm still working on that. Then Raphael and I'm in ya Cause I'm putting my dick inside Every single woman turtle dick You can't hide, I can hide I got a shell I can hide inside it I live in hell I In November of 2013 He created a new channel Formerly called Drowning in Horseshoes On this channel He would primarily review Friendship is Magic But would eventually start collabing on a podcast called The Horsecast with another content creator called Digibro. As this podcast went on, more My Little Pony Friendship is Magic reviewers would start appearing as guests on the podcast. There'll be thieves in order X and Aspen, whoever gets elected. But Hunter represents something wholly alien to the other candidates for sheriff ideas, and a sympathy towards the young, generous, grass-oriented society, which is making the only serious effort 
to face the technological nightmare we have created. The only thing against him is he's a visionary. He wants to cure a world. Well, talking about Trixie and their former Digibro online persona. God, like, just every iteration of this person I freaking love. It's crazy. Even, like, the one part I'm working on is, like, I think even some of their early music is a little rough, and they like it rough. It's not even that it's, like, on it's an accident. Like, they want it to sound, like, the best way I can describe it. I almost want to make a parody song. It's, like, literally, like, singing a song, rapping a song, but making it, like, slightly annoying and, like, throwing glass against the floor. Like, that's what they want to sound like. So it's not against them, that's the point. They want that sound. I don't love that sound, I'm not sure what to call it. They've been calling it a few different things. I don't know if it's still shoegaze or cringe core or whatever they're calling it still. But geez, like, that was a perfect introduction, by the way. I, I just want to run it back, actually. He's a visionary. He wants to cure the world. Well, talking about Trixie and their former Digibro online persona, it is first important that I note that as with many of the creators, I will talk about much of their earlier content that has been produced has either been erased or made private. But but come on, did you really expect like the internet to last forever? I think that and now I mean copyright's one thing. If you if you like something, take I'm not saying steal it, but like document it. Like even like this, you know, just just saving the parts that you liked. Even you know, I'm not saying it's the same quality as like a, a Pixar movie. But still, if there's a scene from a Pixar movie, even that might not last forever. So I think you should document it. I don't know. Go, go for it. I'm not, it's a random example. I'm not sure if you're going to But people have some sort of outrage when, like, Trixie gave full warning that her videos would be probably taken down. Some were re-uploaded. Now, they gave less time than they thought. But still, like, I don't want to compare it to the Trump raid, but it's almost like they had a subpoena. And then the raid happened, and you're like, oh shit, it happened. But like, they did tell you that, you know, that some videos that make them feel comfortable. And I feel like with ContraPoints too, I don't, I didn't see half of the videos before they, they transitioned. I just, I just don't, I have no idea what they look like. Right now, their channel looks kind of like an art piece itself, <laughs> you know? Like, so if you look at their channel, this is it. This is their entire channel. And. You know, I, I like this idea actually of having almost a gallery, a gallery of your work rather than everything ever. But one thing that Digibro and now Trixie did was they had everything documented, everything. It was every everything was linked everywhere, and I would think, I'm not saying it worked. I would think for having all of your videos connected in one place like that and everything that you should have a very very wide net. And that overall, that playlist of 1,000 or 20,000 videos, in my head, almost like a TikTok compilation, should be getting a lot of views in itself, but it's not. I'm not sure if it's because of the algorithm or not, but my dream, obviously, would be what Trixie has. And, you know, amended, got rid of some things. Um, there's a lot still out there. All I was trying to say was, for people to think that these videos are going to last forever in the first place, especially people's first videos, sometimes it's hard for people. I had a whole other channel. I mean, it's gone. Um, there's different reasons why it's gone. Sometimes it's like a personal information may have been leaked or yada yada. You know, I was a kid. Um, my first video ever was me discovering a Minecraft door glitch. This is an alpha, literally or beta, like a, a Minecraft. And I, sh you sh basically, you, you shoot the arrows at a door, a wooden door. And then there's like, you know, six, seven door or an arrow sticking in, in there. You walk around the door, you open it. And then the, the arrows would either, I forget if it was, they would sit in place. I think that they would stick in place. They would kind of just fly there. And if you broke the door, they would launch again and they would hit me. So I was like, what the heck? I'm shooting the door. I'm opening it, breaking it, and I'm getting hit by my own arrows. Like, that was the first video I ever made, and it was like text on screen. You know, it wasn't like a, a voiceover thing. But that's my understanding. It was my first video, and yeah, it's gone. What can I say? I mean, I, I like to document it only partially because. It gives me some, like, not credibility, but I'm like, my, my friends, uh, like, I goes raw, they are Minecraft stream, Minecraft YouTubers back in the day, and, like, my only claim to fame is, like, well, I was technically a Minecraft YouTuber before they were, but the date's gone. It's all gone. Maybe, maybe the Wayback Machine could show that. I'm not sure. Doesn't matter. Point was, this is a ramble, and all I was trying to say from this controversy over Trixie's videos, especially with some of the transitions, 
they want to make something more of an art gallery, especially because that huge note, or sorry, that, that huge net of, you know, broad diversity of, of all the things that ever been on, like literally like drawing crayons to making music to making anime videos to being in someone else's video, all that being in one place still wasn't really enough. Which is crazy to me. Like, that's what I want. So I'm not sure what kind of lesson I'm learning here, but I'm just trying to say is like, for that much content, you really think that everything is going to last forever, either just because of maybe the collapse of YouTube or data space or even just tidying up the channel. One thing I think YouTube should let me, let me do, I should be able to personalize whatever video I want on YouTube. I should put whatever I want in whatever order I want. Yes, you can sort by date. You can sort by videos. But why can't I put, I don't understand, like, feature page. No, no, no. Why can't I put like or even remove the option if I want to of, of you going through the videos and just me only having a curated sure you can search it up I'm saying why can't I design the layout of how it looks to better have people click into my channel for the good videos rather than them clicking in seeing videos seeing me posting you know my 500 video of Isaac you know I'm like oh shit I don't care about that I feel like if I could do that it would enable people to post massive raw videos and them not being first on the freaking list of your videos if you're scrolling through, you know? If I could just hide certain videos, or not hide them, but put them, like, just move them to a different category even. That's one thing that YouTube sucks with, I will say. Love the YouTube player, love accessibility, and there's still a fear that like, well, what if my content in the cloud, if I don't back it up, like, Who's gonna save all this work? Who's gonna save all these videos, and all this content? If, if if not you, you know. And a lot of it is is based off profit margin. Like for me, this video, I mean, I guess it's profit. Margin. I didn't come into this video thinking I'd do that, but I, I'm just trying to react to people I know, people I like, videos I've not seen that are relatively short. Hope they'll make them too long by rambling. So hopefully, get back to the video. It is inevitable that I'm probably going to miss out on some details or leave some things out. However. I fully encourage anyone who wants to correct any information or add to details I missed in the comments down below, as I may make correction videos in the future. Trixie is a transgender woman who formerly went by the name Digibro slash Digibrony. The earliest evidence I can find of their internet content creation is a channel called Modal Soul Pro Productions. I'm actually not fully sure if I pronounced that correctly. It was created in 2006, the first few videos being drastically different from her anime and Friendship is Magic videos that she would go on to make years later and become known for. These videos were called Project Awesome. I just gotta say, like, what the hell? That's... That's Trixie? No way. Bullshit. People are not joking when they say the first few videos <laughs> like being girl. drastically like, what different the from hell? Yeah, do. and Friendship is Magic no videos way. that she would go on to make years later and become known for. These videos were called Project Awesomeness and were mostly goofy sketch comedy videos that they would film with the help of their brother Victor and others. They were very amateur YouTube videos created by them and their brother when they were just teens, so there's not really too much to say about them. However, the earliest content of Digibro talking about anime would come not too much later when they would create a website called My Sword is Unbelievably Dull, with the website's title likely being a reference to the infamous scene from Garzy's Wing. Dinosaurs are here, and they use bows and arrows! My sword is unbelievably dull! If you die over there, what will happen to me back here? The website served as a place for them to post anime blogs. The earliest post I can find on the site is from 2008 and is called An Epic Journey Introduction, in which they explain their intentions to spend years using their blog to pour their heart and soul into talking about anime while trying to better understand what would make an anime their favorite. So, just a side note here. I'm actually kind of glad I didn't stumble upon any of this content until, like, I'm now a 26-year-old. Like, this video was made uh, June 16th. So it's, like, a little old at this point, at least when I'm posting this video, it's uh, September 4th. But, um, I 
I wonder how things would be different if I was like, I don't know, if part of my creativeness was formed by watching these people. It was in a different way where like I never saw this content until now. I wonder though, like, I'm not saying it'd be worse off. I'm just happy that I get to see this looking back rather than like living through this. I, I wonder how different it'd be. So that they can explain it to their online fans. Hoping that spending years of blogging about anime would give them sage-like knowledge of anime. The website has a number of other interesting posts, but I will not be going into too much detail about them here, as there is so much to talk about regarding this creator that to talk about everything she has done would be impossible for the scope of this series. I will just say that some notable shows she would discuss on the site were Gurren Lagann, Boogie Pop Phantom, and Neon Genesis Evangelion. Later, in November of 2012, she created the channel she is perhaps best known for, called Digi Brony, which would later take on these other names shown on screen. However, due to their early content being set to private, even with the archives of their content on YouTube, it is hard to say which video was the first one uploaded on their main channel, or if that video even exists online anymore. All I can say is that during the early years, they would often be known to make videos discussing and analyzing friendship is magic, while representing themselves with a pony avatar, similar to T-Bap's avatars. Digibro would also do some live action videos. Are you saying that they were a ping tuber or a VTuber years ago? That's what I'm saying. Such as their live action Q&A videos, some comedy skits, and just general shit posts. In 2013, they would also start a podcast with some other creators called The Pub Crawl. Then they would later go on to meet a creator with multiple channels called Drowning in Horseshoes or Drowning in Footwear on their non-MLP channel. They would start another podcast together called The Horsecast and despite the title, they would mostly discuss things unrelated to My Little Pony. On the first episode of this podcast, they would discuss their YouTube careers, relationships with women, and Digibro would have their then-girlfriend come on the show as well. I mean, that just sounds awesome, though. I don't know. They would do this cast for three episodes, until on February 18th of 2014, Digibro would be absent for an episode, and Jess would instead talk to Give and Take. But who was Give and Take? Well, I'm glad you asked. Uh, so I don't know how to make music, so I'm gonna... In the ancient times of our ancestors, in other words, 2008, a channel under the name Give and Take would be created. This channel, however, would not have any content until April of 2010, when a short stop-motion animation of a toy soldier moving around and then shooting at another toy soldier would be posted. It was a very short but fun little animation that would be followed up. God, imagine like how hard making videos though back in 2008 was. I was like 14. I, I, look, I've got decent knowledge now how to use modern tools, but geez, it's so much easier nowadays. So I really want to encourage anybody, get into it. Like, what they did right there, though, that's hard. Up ...by four more stop-motion animations using small toys such as Lego, Play-Doh, and more toy soldiers. They would also post a meme that... Well, honestly, I don't know what to say about this show clip. They would eventually make a sixth animation using live-action footage of themselves with an animated gun overlaid on the video in order to make it appear as a live-action Call of Duty game. They would animate the gun shooting as people passed by in their car and animate a character shooting at 
them in the video. One, that's really cool. Two, that's kind of scary. I don't know. The description of this video notes that it was made as a school project. Gibbon would then start making meme slash YouTube poop videos with footage of My Little Pony, among some other memes, indicating that they were a fan of the show. They would eventually switch to making MLP compilation videos. In November of 2013, they would create another meme called Fluttershy Doesn't Get Any Lines. This one would end with the announcement that they had been working on some ANY Pony videos by creating visuals for ANY Pony. This would be shortly after they hit 5,000 subscribers. Is there still time in, in our current generation for this to happen? Because again, when I'm looking at these people, I'm just kind of seeing like a, like a, not that I was inspired by them, but like, almost like a, a kinship of similarity of like, I mean, I would love to do everything they just did. Then, I'm, like, not just give and take, but everybody here. Finally, in December of 2013, they would make their first My Little Pony analysis video. In their first MLP analysis video, they referenced Digi Brony, Brony Curious, which I believe was Tom Oliver, Drowning in Horseshoes, and some other creators. They start the video off with some light humor. Daring don't. Daring, daring, don't do it. Daring do not do it. She's real now, which means my priceless artifacts are in danger. Then they compare their own opinion against the opinion of other MLP reviewers. They would continue this MLP series, but change the title multiple times until they settled on Gibbon's take. Which I mean, yeah, I don't think it could possibly have a better title than that. <laughs> it would not be long before Gibbon would start a Patreon after growing an audience before finally being invited to be on the horse cast with Drowning in Horseshoes. I can't imagine again, getting views, making you money off of, like, off of this. This does feel amateur, definitely. But I love that. I love that you can grow through making a name for yourself, you know? Which means it's finally time to talk about the horse cast next time. This episode is out of time. In the next episode of Who Were the Procrastinators, I'll be covering the horse cast, Lethal Aurora Mage, and the beginning of the Procrastinators podcast. Uh, all right, CJ. Looking forward to uh, episode three then. Yeah, that was really good. Uh, honestly, even you, CJ, and like you put all this together, it was great. Episode one was, was really good too. Uh, but yeah, this, this is great. Uh, I like how you're not trying to put yourself into it too much. I think I would still like to hear some of how it affected you, but the hist I was this is a history, so whatever you want to do with it. But um, yeah, yeah, that's what I'm doing here. I'm literally giving you my take on my opinion. It's great that you know there are still people like you that are uh, reminding us of, of where where our favorite people came from. And again, to reflect on this video, knowing that Trixie retired, interesting. You know, interesting. So yeah, I'm looking forward to more. But uh, yeah, that's all for now. Thanks for watching.